So in the fourth one, Ibn al-Qayyim, he says, Understand the right Allah has over you during this calamity. So understand the right that Allah has over you during during this calamity. There's a hadith uh, that I that I can never forget, alhamdulillah, by Muad bin Jabal, where Muhammad, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa asked him, what is the greatest right? Um, uh, um, what is the greatest right that Allah has over you? And that is that you worship Allah Azawajal. Okay, that is the greatest right that Allah has over you, that you worship Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you worship Him alone, and you worship Him how He deserves and how He has commanded you to, to do so. It is obligatory to be patient, and there is no difference of opinion in this, Ibn al-Qayyim says. Some scholars say it is obligatory to be patient and pleased. So there's some scholars that actually say it is not just obligatory to be patient, but actually pleased, subhanAllah. Thus the person is commanded to perform the rights of Allah and worship Him during this, this calamity. This is a necessity, meaning it is necessary. And he says if you do not do so, the calamity is multiplied. Meaning it's only gonna get it's only gonna, gonna gonna get worse if you don't worship Allah during during the calamity, um, and this is known Subhanallah. This is known. You know what I'm saying? You know, it can only become the calamity can only become easier for you when you worship Allah. Why? It's because Allah He was the one that decreed the calamity for you. Now, when you are patient and you are giving Allah His right, Allah is lessening that calamity for you. He is lowering it for you because you're you're actually making it easy for yourself by worshiping Allah, because Allah is the one who is in control of your calamity, of your life, of your breaths, everything. Subhanahu wa taala. So by you worshiping Allah Azawajal during the calamity, you are making it easier for yourself, and Allah will definitely be making it easier for you to go through, and uphold, and to and to and to go through and to. Um, overcome the calamity ta'ala. And of course the greatest right of Allah is Tawheed La ilaha illallah Which means that there is no one worthy of worship Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That is the greatest right that Allah has over you Which is Tawheed Which is to worship Allah alone And it's it's well known in the hadith of Muadh bin Jabal I think uh, in, in Kitab al-Tawheed Which everyone should study Which everyone, study, which everyone, which everyone studies obviously Um Um Muhammad ibn, ibn Abdul Wahab, he mentions the hadith in the beginning from, from when I read it. As a matter of fact, I'm about to pull out this book because this is very important. Knowing the right of Allah, knowing the right that Allah has over you, this is very important. Give me one second. So this is Kitab Tawheed. Kitab Tawheed by Sheikh Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. Actually, subhanAllah, we're going to start off with Allah Azza wa Jalla and Allah's statement. Allah the Almighty said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I, Allah, created not the jinns and men except they should worship me alone. And it's from Surah al dariyat And he stated, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِ أَبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ And verily, we have sent among every Ummah, community, nation, a messenger proclaiming, Worship Allah alone, and avoid or keep away from Taagut, all false deities. Do not worship Taagut besides Allah, meaning like Shayateen, Jinns, Wajin. And it's from Surah Nahl. And he said, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَن لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبُلْغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفِّلْ وَلَا تَنْهَرُهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَاخْفِذْ لَهُمَا جَنَاهَ ذُلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا 
and your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him, and that you be dutiful to your parents. If one of them or both of them attain old age in your life, say not to them a word of disrespect, nor shout at them, but address them in terms of honor, and lower unto them the wink of submission and humility through mercy, and say, My Lord, bestow on them your mercy, as they did bring me up when I was small. And this is Surah Al-Isra, verses 23 to 24. Astaghfirullah. And he said, وَعَبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا And this is from Surah, Surah An-Nisa. Worship Allah and join none with Him in worship. And he said, قُلْ تَعَالَوْا أَتُلُ مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَلَّا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا We're going to stop right here in this verse because there's a lot more verses. Actually, this is the last verse, but we're gonna we're only gonna translate this right here. Say, and this is from Surah Al An'am. Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, come, I will recite what your Lord has prohibited you from. Join not anything in worship with Him, meaning Allah. Be good and dutiful to your parents. So we're gonna stop right here. Bin Allah Taala. This is a long verse. Um, it's verses. Actually, it's two, it's three verses. Verses uh, from Surah Al An'am, chapter number six, verse one fifty one through one one fifty three. Now this is the hadith that I wanted to get into. It's right here. Subhanallah. The hadith of Ibn Mas'ud. The hadith from Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Whoever wishes to ascertain the very well of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi on which the Prophet has put his seal, let him read the statement of Allah. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Actually, it's the hadith of Muhammad bin Jabal. Excuse me. Not, not Ibn Mas'ud. Even though Ibn Mas'ud is relevant to the verse that we just read. You know, let him re let him read the verse that we just read. Okay. Say. Um, o Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, come. I will recite what your Lord has prohibited you from. Join not anything in worship with Him, up to and verily this is my straight path. Meaning, um, um, the verse. وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِ صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمَةٍ فَاتَّبِئُوا. Okay. Right now, we're gonna read the hadith of Muhammad bin Jabal. Kuntu. رديف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على حمار فقال لي يا معاذ أتدري ما حق الله على على الإباد وما حق الإباد على الله قلت الله ورسوله أعلم قال أحق الله على على الإباد أن يعبدوه ولا يشركوا به شيئا وحق قل عباد على الله ألا يعذب من لا يشرك به شيئا قلت يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أفلا أبشر الناس قال لا تبشرهم فيتكل فيتكلوا I was riding behind the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم on a donkey and he said to me oh Muad, do you know what is the right do you know what is the right of Allah on his slaves? And what is the right of the slaves upon Allah? I responded, Allah and his messenger know best. He continued, the right of Allah upon his slaves is to worship him alone and never to associate anything with, with him. The right of the slaves upon him is not to punish any person who does not associate anything with him. I said, oh Allah's messenger, may I not give the glad tidings to the people. He replied, No, do not inform them lest they they rely on this promise and lapse in their service to him. And the hadith above is mentioned in two Sahih books, meaning Al Bukhari and Muslim. So this is the hadith that I want to mention. The right of Allah Azawajal, is to worship him alone without associating anything with him. And obviously in times of hardship and trial it is it is Allah's right that we worship him alone and not associate anything with him.